Hello and welcome to another video with me, Christian Rauchenwald. Now in today's video, I'm finally going to unbox our Nibra Helium Outdoor Hotspot. If you've followed this channel previously, you might have already seen my Cultship Connect Rugby 2 unboxing and or installation guide. I'm gonna put those two videos in the card up here right now. They also include steps on what to do if your Rugby 2 Cultship Connect Hotspot is visible or shown as relayed in the Helium Explorer. But I said today, it's all about the Nibra Outdoor hotspot and the unboxing offset hotspot but that's not all that I'm gonna cover in today's video but I'm also gonna show you all the additional devices that you need to properly install your Nibra outdoor hotspot and before we go to the actual unboxing of the Nibra outdoor helium hotspot there's one other thing that most of you might be curious about and that is how long did it take for us to receive those hotspots we originally ordered our outdoor hotspots in March, to be more precise, on the 1st of March this year. Well, now we have the 10th of October. However, I've already had those Nibra outdoor hotspots, or the one that you're going to see in this video specifically, here at home for roughly six weeks now. They actually shipped faster than the hotspot that we ordered from Culchip Connect. And I have to say it has been a better experience than buying from Culchip Connect as well. At the time of recording this video, last I checked at least, both manufacturers still had more or less a waiting list. So in both cases, no matter which hotspot you go for, if you buy one from Nibra, doesn't matter if it's indoor or outdoor, if you buy one from Culture Connect, or many of the other manufacturers as well still have huge waiting lists so that you cannot get your hotspot within a reasonable amount of time. But if you're still thinking about getting one of these hotspots to join the Helium network yourself, there is in my opinion no huge point in waiting. You should simply go ahead and join the waiting list or if possible already place your order and simply accept that it will take a couple of months before those hotspots appear. Now if you don't know where to order the hotspots, you can find links to the Nibra and Culture Connect hotspots down in the description and in the first pinned comment below. With all of that out of the way, let's switch cameras and actually start the unboxing so you see what you get when you order your Nibra Outdoor Hotspot and what kind of additional stuff you need on top of that to actually operate it properly. And if you've seen my Culture Connect Rock V2 unboxing, you already notice a difference because with the indoor hotspots, it's with most of them pretty much plug and play. So you get one box that contains the device, you unpack it and you set it up and you're pretty much good to go. You just might have to deal with a relayed hotspot by setting up port forwarding, which again is explained in the videos that are in the card in the top right corner. However, when you get an outdoor hotspot, it's actually not just about getting the hotspot, but it's also about getting some additional devices. The first thing you might need is a so-called power over ethernet injector, which means that the ethernet wire that you basically plug in here and then from here you go to the router, doesn't only transmit data, so the hotspot is connected to the internet, but it also provides the electricity to the hotspot. Spot. And there you have basically two options. Either you get a power over ethernet injector like this one, which I'm gonna place a link in the description down below and in the pinned comment as well. Or if you're lucky, you might have a router that already supports power over ethernet on some of its ports or maybe on all of its ports and also supports enough power on those ports. But in most cases, you'll actually will have to get one of those to basically make sure that your hotspot is supplied with power. The alternative to getting the power over ethernet injector would actually be to order a separate power supply for the hotspot, which you would then have to install on the case. It's not rocket science, it just requires you to switch one pin and Nibra has great instructions for that, but it kind of defies the purpose to having an outdoor hotspot because that would mean that outdoors you not only would have to run your network wire to the hotspot, but you would also have to additionally have some electricity socket nearby, which considering that we're talking about outdoors installations is quite unlikely, so you might have to get one of those things. At the time of recording this video, this specific device is listed for $19.99 on Amazon and said you can find a link down in the description or the pinned comment below. We're not going to unbox the additional things that you need. I just want to mention them so you're aware of what is needed and why it's needed. And we're going to focus on the unboxing obviously of the hotspot. And additionally, we might look into the box of the 5.8 dB antenna. Now with the power injector out of the way, the next thing we notice are those two things here. As the label says, or as you can read at the bottom, those are Ethernet surge protectors. So basically they protect your home network and other devices that are connected to the same network if there is some power surge coming from the hotspot to your Ethernet. Those are, at the time of recording this video, available on Amazon for also close to $19 per piece. And as far as I know, although I am not a certified electrician, it should be actually sufficient to have one of those. 
between the power over ethernet injector and your hotspot. So the network wire would go from your router to the power over ethernet injector, from the injector to the surge protector and from the surge protector then to the hotspot. And if there would be a power surge coming from the hotspot, so for some reason there's some electricity outside that wants to get inside, the surge protector would take care of it and basically protect the devices like the power over ethernet injector, your router and everything else that's connected to network wires on your router. So with that we have that out of the way and can put them also aside. Which brings us to this small box here and that is the one thing that we had to wait for and order twice because it got lost in the mail and that is actually an antenna surge protector. That one I'm gonna unpack because the box doesn't suggest anything. You can order them at piesupply.com I think it is and the surge protector is currently priced at roughly $10 per piece. And that piece here is supposed to go between the hotspot and your antenna and it should be grounded. So there should be a wire and attached to here that is grounded somewhere. So that if your antenna is for some reason hit by lightning, for example, the hotspot doesn't get damaged. Now in theory, if you have this antenna surge protectors, because lightning usually strikes the highest point and so on, you might not need the ethernet surge protectors. But considering the price of roughly $10 for this and $20 for the ethernet surge protectors, I think it's better to have both in place to make sure that if there is some power surge, that your devices that are connected to your home network are not fried along the way. So that's this and we can move it back in the box and basically put it aside as well. And with that, once that closes, put it aside, we are actually at the unboxing of the actual outdoor hotspot. Now to, to do that and show you what's in the box, I'm just gonna move the antenna aside a little bit and we're gonna check where this box opens. It's either, or it's on this side, yeah, so perfect. So we're just gonna open this and you can see nothing because there's a cover on top of it and there we go. To give you a comparison, because I understand that watching this video it's hard to judge how big that thing actually is, I'll have my passport here, which is something you would also have in your house. And so if we put my passport here, you can see that it's pretty much twice as high and it's like in terms of the box height, which is almost the hotspot height, it's also roughly the same as this here. Uh, compared to the Ruck V2 hotspot, I don't have it here right now because it's installed and earning us helium every day. The Ruck V2 in comparison is roughly this size here and same height as the box. So the outdoor hotspot is definitely much, much bigger than the indoor hotspots are, but it's not that the electronics inside are much bigger or use up way more space. I mean, they are designed in a little bit of a more generous way. However, it's simply that the box is bigger and is created in a way that it can basically withstand different temperatures and natural forces. Now in that box, the first thing other than the huge hotspot that you might notice is this antenna here, and that is the LoRaWAN antenna. So that's the antenna that actually is responsible for earning you helium or for providing the proof of coverage and also forwarding packages and so on. And it's a 2.8 dB antenna as far as I remember. Let's check, no, actually it's a 3 dB antenna. The Culchip Rock V2 has a 2.8 dB antenna. The Nibra Outdoor Hotspot ships with a 3 dB antenna. Now at Nibra you can also order additional antennas like this 5.8 dB antenna for example that we're gonna open as well and for example even an 8 dB antenna. And you might be tempted to get the strongest antenna because you think the stronger it is the bigger your earnings will be but that's actually not true because each antenna actually has a different kind of like pattern how it sends or receives the signal. It's not purpose of this video and I'm actually not gonna create a specific video about that because there's already one out there from another YouTube creator but I'm gonna put that in the cart in the top right corner and if you own a helium hotspot and you haven't watched that video yet and you don't understand fully what's the difference between a 2.8 3 dB antenna and an 8 dB antenna then I really recommend that you watch that video because it will help you understand which antenna would actually yield you the most earnings. But yeah, sticking with the unboxing, so you see that antenna doesn't actually look that special. It looks like some metal and some plastic and that's pretty much it. And as said, the surge protector for the antenna would be connected here and then connected to the hotspot on one side. I'm gonna put that back here in the plastic wrapping real quick and put it back and we move on with the unboxing. We have a second antenna here and you might have already guessed it, that is actually a Wi-Fi antenna. So while you obviously might use the network wire to connect your outdoor hotspot because it also can serve as your power supply, the hotspot itself still supports Wi-Fi and you could technically 
get an external power supply, don't connect the network wire and connect the hotspot with Wi-Fi to your home network or another available Wi-Fi to basically be able to connect with the Helium network. I don't think it makes much sense because I think you anyway will have to install some kind of wire so you might as well install the network wire so your hotspot has a stable permanent connection with your internet connection and therefore with the Helium network. Anyway, there is not much to it. It simply gets screwed on the bottom here. I'm gonna cover that when we take out the hotspot spot as well. There is no need for a surge protector in this case because that antenna would actually be pointing downwards. So and as I said if lightning would strike it would strike the highest point which would be the antenna that is on top or the case itself. I'm gonna put that one aside for now just so that we can get to the rest. There's also some plastic here and that thing here is actually used. You would basically install the network wire through it so that you can then screw it in here so that the whole thing is actually in quote airtight. I mean it's probably not fully airtight but it's at least then weather resistant so that the outdoor hotspot actually survives being outdoors. I'm gonna put that aside as well. And the next thing in the box are actually the mounting clamps. I'm not gonna unpack that however. It's simply the material that helps you install the hot spot on a pole for example. You will see how that looks in my separate installation video because we are using those in our office right now to basically screw the hotspot to one of our shelves in our test installation. So you will see how they work and how to install it there as well in the separate video that's as said going to come in a couple of days or maybe a week from now. So we're gonna put that aside and with that we actually get to the actual hotspot. And as promised, it's really some things. So you can see it's actually quite a huge box. There's not much to it visually other than the Nibra logo on the front. As said, this here is the bottom side where you have the connector for your network wire, which also serves as power supply if you have a power over ethernet injector. Then here we have the antenna screw or whatever mount for the Wi-Fi antenna. And theoretically you could remove, for example, this screw here to get an additional hole if you would want to, for example, install an external power supply for your hotspot. However, for that you would also have to open those four screws here, which would allow you to flip open the hotspot, which we're not gonna do in this video, but you will see it also in our installation guide video how the hotspot looks inside. And then you could basically pull the wire in and plug it in on top plus change one pin. But as I said, that's also covered in Helium's or Nebra's quick start guide for the Nebra outdoor hotspot. If we look on the top there, we can see there is currently only one antenna socket and that is for the LoRaWAN antenna. So again, the antenna that earns us the Helium coins. But we can also see that there are two screws here and those would be not there if you would order the Nebra Outdoor Hotspot with the 4G module. Because if you order it with the 4G module, you will have two 4G antennas that are screwed in here and here as well. And that is pretty much it to be honest. Now if we look in the box, there are also some Nebra stickers. I'll have to blur those here because they contain basically the physical hardware address of this specific hotspot. And that is pretty much it. That's all that's in the box besides a few stickers. I'm gonna have to blur those because they contain a QR code and exactly the hardware ID of this specific hotspot to add it to the Nebra dashboard, which is also something that I might show you in the installation video. But with that, we actually finished unboxing the Nebra outdoor hotspot. So I'm just gonna put everything back and we're gonna take a look at the 5.8 dB antenna as well. Now if you decide to order an additional antenna, it's not gonna come in a fancy box. All it does, it comes in a box like this. Depending on the antenna that you order, the box might be longer or shorter. In this case, that is a 5.8 dBi antenna, so it's stronger than the original 3 dB antenna and should therefore have a longer range. However, it also has less signal in a shorter area. Again, I recommend clicking on the card in the top right corner and checking out the video that explains how the different antenna strengths influence the area of coverage of your hotspot. Now there's not much to it as you might expect if we open that and pull out what's inside we can see that we have basically that's all there is to it. So first of all we have mounting material. I'm not gonna untie this right now so it's simply to mount the antenna separately somewhere. The antenna itself, although it's still in the plastic, but you can see that it's looking the same as the 3dB antenna, it's just longer. And on top of that, there are some additional wires. Now those wires basically allow you to mount the antenna somewhere separately and then have the wire go to wherever the hotspot is. So theoretically, you could get one of those antennas for your indoor hotspot, but install the antenna outdoors and then use one of those antenna wires to go through the wall to the indoor hotspot. 
and therefore also boost the earnings of your indoor hotspot because the antenna would certainly not be placed inside and the signal wouldn't be weakened by your windows and walls but the antenna would be placed outside and as said depending on the antenna strength that you get it would cover a different area and might get you more witnesses or more other hotspots would be able to witness yours. That's pretty much it. I'm also going to put that real quick back into the box and then you're going to see me again on our main camera. And here I am again, so now you know exactly what you get when you order Nebra's outdoor hotspot. You also now know what additional parts you need to consider in order to make sure your network is protected from power surges when you install your hotspot outdoors. And you also know what to expect if you just order one of the separate antennas available at Nebra. There is honestly not much more to it. Now I know many of you might still be wondering if Helium is worth it for you. And the only way to figure that out is to consider where you are able to install the hotspot and then head to hotspotty.com, I think is the domain. You can also find it in the description in the first pinned comment down below. And then basically look up that area and check how many other hotspots there are already. But all of that is also not the topic of this video. As said, I'm gonna record a separate video that shows you how to install the outdoor hotspot, although I'm not gonna install it outdoors for the video, but we're gonna, as said, use our demo installation in the office for that specific video. But it will show you exactly where you need to place the search protectors and all the other stuff and how to actually set it up in the Helium app. Now, last but not least, as always, if you have any questions whatsoever about the hotspots, the installation, maybe problems you are facing with setting up your Nebra hotspot or your Culture hotspot for that matter, you can always just leave them in the comments down below or even better in the pinned comment and in the description, there's also a link that takes you to our Discord community where we have a dedicated Helium channel and also channels for all the other projects that I've reviewed in the past. Plus on top of that, there we also have daily giveaways where you daily have a chance to win a few dollars worth of Bitcoin simply for being an active community member. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you in one of my other videos. Till then. Bye-bye.